Hello everyone, thank you for joining us today for this webinar. Uh, I'll start it now. So uh, today, uh, the webinar, we have part one of finite element method webinar series. And the topic today is settlement analysis of embankment. I'm Ali Reza and I'm one of the geomechanical specialists at Rock Science. And I will be uh, presenting the topic in this presentation. So uh, as for consolidation analysis, uh, both in RS2 and RS3, we have the coupled and uncoupled fluid solid analysis, uh, which is basically based on the bio theory uh, that can account for hydromechanical coupling that we have here. We can conduct this kind of analysis for drained, undrained, and fully drained conditions. I'll explain these uh, in a demo. And uh, on top of the formulation that we have for the consolidation analysis, we have extensive library of material model that allows us to do linear and nonlinear analysis and considering this kind of behavior for the materials. Uh, the groundwater analysis that we have along with the uh, consolidation analysis, we can use various permeability functions and also various soil water characteristic functions. So there's a lot of complexities that could be included in this type of analysis based on the formulation that we have, based on the nonlinearity of the material, and also the complexity and nonlinearity that we have in the permeability functions. The basic formulation that we are dealing with here, this is the general consolidation equation. As you can see here, in a, it's presented in a matrix notation. We have the stiffness matrix, K. We have the H permeability matrix, S compressibility matrix, and we have a very important component here is the coupling matrix. Uh, as you see here, these are the unknowns that we are solving for. U is solid deformation or the nodal deformation that we have for the uh, nodes for the elements. P is the pore water pressure. And uh, on the other side, we have time. We are solving consolidation. Things change with time. And we have the external forces that we have for solid phase and also fluid groundwater flow. As, as you see here, the formulation represented here, we have these coupling terms here. And when we are solving it, we are solving for solid deformation and pore water pressure at the same time. So this is the coupled nature of this formulation. When we are defining a consolidation analysis in RS1, RS3, uh, first thing that we assign there in the project in general, we are deciding, we are assigning the type of consolidation that we are solving. Uh, we have a couple of options uh, in RS2 recently developed. These are going to, these are in RS3 as well. We have the fully coupled one, uh, the same formulation that I presented to you. We have the simplified version of it, which is more stable. It is the uncoupled version. The coupled formulation that I presented to you uh, can get complicated, and at some cases, it can be difficult to get convergency and bring the solution, bring the problem to uh, convergence and find a solution. And a simplified version of that, which is in many cases equivalent to the coupled one, is uh, an uncoupled formulation. And uh, that one, we will present it in another presentation. Next, in the right uh, picture that you see, uh, the representation that we have for stages, uh, usually we have one initial stage for establishing the initial field of stress, initial uh, field of pore water pressure. And the subsequent stages, they will have time and we are running for consolidation analysis. We are accounting for generation of excess pore water pressure, generation of uh, anticipation of it, and also uh, generate uh, evolution of the settlement. In the drain condition for these stages, what we have is uh, drain, and drain and fully drain condition. Drain is the case that we are actually solving for the coupled UP formulation, via formulation. We are considering the hydromechanical coupling. And uh, we have time and we have the dissipation of excess pore water pressure. Undrain is the case that 
that dissipation of excess pore water pressure is not happening, uh, we don't, uh, the time will be taken out, or you can look at it as undrained condition, you don't have enough time for the pore water pressure to dissipate. And uh, the second option, the undrained, is gonna be another topic for another presentation. And fully drained condition uh, that we have for the drain condition here repre is representing uh, the steady state condition. So in this case, you're assuming that you have enough time for the excess pore water pressure to dissipate completely. You're arriving at the steady state condition. And uh, for example, you will see in my demo uh, examples that I will use this one to find the final uh, settlement at the state that everything has been settled down and uh, we are looking at the final settlement under the load. Uh, just uh, they are reminding me to let you guys know if you have any questions, please type in in the question sections. I have my colleagues on the other side. Uh, they will try to answer as many questions as possible. At the end of the presentation, I will try to address as many questions as I can. And uh, if there is anything left, we will get back to you uh, in emails. Okay, uh, as many cases, we have uh, verifications uh, to prove that, okay, the formulation, the methods and everything works. And uh, the first example that I will show you here is a simple one dimensional consolidation verification. It is equivalent to Terzaghi's formulation, uh, one dimensional consolidation. So we are looking at uh, soil column here, it is only the drainage allowed from the top and we are applying load at the top. Uh, when we are solving it using the Terzaghi equation, we have the coefficient of volume compressibility and also we have the coefficient of consolidation or the permeability. Uh, considering these and solving for Terzaghi equations, uh, at time zero, you will have your excess pore water pressure divided by the initial load is going to be one. And as the time passes, you have the dissipation of excess pore water pressure. As the time increases, the graph goes from this light blue to the darker blue one. So this is the uh, this generation at the very beginning, excess pore water pressure under load. And when you have time, you have the dissipation of that excess pore water pressure. The solid lines are generated using the closed form solution, uh, analytical solution uh, using Terzaghi equation. Now, Converting this to finite element analysis, uh, what we have, we have MV coefficient of compressibility. I'm finding equivalent elastic modulus and Poisson ratio to match that coefficient of compressibility and use it in my finite element analysis with this mesh. The permeability can be uh, plugged in directly from the same uh, material properties. And the rest of it, you can see the results of numerical calculation compared to analytical solution. The dots and symbols are from RS2. The solid line is from the 1D Terzaghi equation. As you can see, this very simple case of one dimensional consolidation, the results are matching perfectly fine. The other point that I would like to make about uh, this example is that we are looking at a linear consolidation problem. The material is elastic and the material is linear. Taking it one step higher, we are looking at a clay foundation, clay material, we are looking at a nonlinear behavior. So uh, at the left side is showing the problem that was solved in the reference as given here. So you have the footing, you have the foundation, you have a load on top, the load is increasing to a certain level at the, uh, up to a certain time, and it's gonna be there uh, for the rest of the time. Water table is at the top and uh, the problem was looking at the settlement, vertical displacement at point A, and generation and dissipation of excess pore water pressure at point B. Right side is showing the geometry mesh and boundary condition equivalent to what we have from the, from the reference, and uh, all the material properties listed here, and we are using that modified CAM clay model, which is nonlinear, and uh, the whole thing, we have taken the uh, simulation one step higher than what it was before, linear and uh, one dimensional. Now we have 2D and it is nonlinear. This one shows the results 
obtained from the reference and also what we calculated in RS2. The left side is showing the settlement with time and the right side is showing the generation of generation and dissipation of excess pore water pressure with time. As you see, uh, we have a very good match between the reference and the result predicted by RS2. Now, uh, that was just to indicate that we have different levels of complexity uh, that could be included in this type of analysis. Now, uh, I will jump into embankment consolidation demo. Uh, the 2D examples that I have for you here, uh, I will start with this geometry that is presented on the right side. We are looking at consolidation, coupled analysis of road embankment that includes the stages of construct, construction of the embankment and also the traffic load. The middle layer, the pink layer that we have here is the material that is more prone to settle and also has lower permeability. Uh, I will investigate different constitutive models for that one. I will use more Coulomb, cam clay, modified cam clay and North sand material model in this case. And uh, we will see the effect of these different material properties, these different material models in calculations of settlement. I'm just looking at the list to see if everybody is okay. Okay, so, uh, okay. The embankment is constructed in four layers and we have at the top the uniform load 10 kPa uh, as for, to represent the traffic load. And later on, I will apply big terrain and vacuum consolidation to accelerate the consolidation process. Uh, when I was talking about constitutive models, different material model that I'm going to use for that pink layer, the middle layer, I talked about more Coulomb, modified cam clay, and Norsan. So uh, these are the material models that I'm using in this example. If you look at these material models in a drain tree axial test, I have presented the results on the right and left side. You can take a look at the variation of axial stress versus axial strain. The more Coulomb one goes linear up, at, comes to the failure, yield surface, and is going to go flat. So this is elastic, perfectly plastic. The other two, they are showing some sort of hardening behavior, gradually uh, approaching to failure. In terms of volumetric strain uh, versus axial strain, the more Coulomb uh, is going elastic compaction. And when it's arriving at the failure, because the dilation angle for this material was zero, it's going flat and uh, the shear happens at uh, constant volume. If we had a dilation angle, we could actually, the volume could come down actually. Uh, it would be giving you dilation and increasing volume. The other two material models, as you see here, they are showing gradual compaction as the shear phases uh, continues and the camp clay one is showing more actually. Uh, these are actually dependent on the material properties. The one that I used in this example in the demo, uh, they are representing this kind of behavior. I'm also uh, showing you, I'm also showing you the odometer test results, simulation on these three material models. Uh, this is the volumetric strain or uh, axial strain versus axial stress. We are looking at an odometer test loaded from the top the more Coulomb one is linear. The other two, Camp Clay and North Sand, they are showing non-linear behavior. They are showing more compressibility and also they are showing some hardening there. Now, uh, the point that I would like to make uh, regarding these three different constitutive models, especially the two one that are non-linear, uh, is the shape of their yield surface. Uh, what you are looking at here, these are the results from uh, a new product that we are developing, will be available in the fall, uh, RS uh, data. So if we are looking at the stress for the, uh, for the stress pass for the North Sand material model in that three axial test, this dashed line here is the one that is actually the shape of the yield surface. Uh, initially, the stress is set is at a confinement under KPA. We have uh, uh, OCR 1.25, so initial yield surface is a little bit beyond 100 kPa. And if I start animating this, this is the process of hardening, gradual failure, and also expansion of that yield surface. 
what is important in these two cases that we are looking at is that the yield surface is closed on the p-axis. P-axis is the mean stress, meaning that uh, if the level of stress is increasing, the mean stress is increasing, you will have a volumetric plastic volumetric strain. And that is how these yield surfaces are expanding. Okay, now uh, let me start with the example. That's the RS2 example. I'm starting from this geometry. Building the geometry is very easy in RS2. You can uh, click, click, and draw these lines, these polylines yourself. We have different uh, boundaries, material boundaries, the stage boundary, external boundary. You can import uh, the geometry completely using DXF. Uh, there are so many tools to generate the geometry. Uh, so I'm not covering that part. So we are starting from this geology. These are the existing layers that we have. Uh, these are going to be uh, the embankments. We are building the embankment in four stages. And uh, this, uh, what I have here is only one stage. The other stages, I have to develop them. So let's start with the project setting. Project setting general. The type of analysis that we would like to do is consolidation type option, top of bio. When we go for bioformulation, uh, for now we are not doing dynamic, and the groundwater must be set to transient, meaning that okay, we have the generation and dissipation of excess pore water pressure with time, so automatically it's going to set these uh, settings for you in the project setting. So that's I'm going to say yes to that. Uh, the solver type and unit, these are okay. The units are uh, for a stress KPA. The time units are days and permeability units meters per second. We are not using any soil profile. It's already defined here for now. And in the stages, so the very first stage is that steady state that we are establishing initial field of stress and uh, pore water pressure. And uh, I have considered additional 16 more stages, so 17 total stages. And uh, as you see here, the initial is steady state, fully drained. The rest of it are the one that I'm actually going to do the consolidation, and I need the time values for these. Uh, you can manually assign time values here, but I have all of them in an Excel sheet here. I'm just gonna select all of these, copy, and I'm selecting the time column, control, holding control, pressing B, control B for paste. And I have all these time values in here for uh, the consolidation analysis. If I go down, you can see that, okay, the time is increasing in as the stage numbers goes up. And at the very last one, 17, I would like this one to be my long-term solution steady state condition after everything has been settled down and the excess pore water pressure has completely dissipated. So I'm actually going to name this one long term solution. And in the drain condition that we have next to it, I'm going to make this one fully drained. When it is fully drained, that means that, okay, it is a steady state. So I'm starting from steady state condition to establish the fill. Then I'm applying some changes. The load is coming, embankment is being made, load being applied. Maybe I'm doing a vacuum consolidation. At, at the very end, after one year passed, and I have done all these analysis, I would like to know what is my final settlement after all these changes has been done to the model. Okay, that's good for the stages. We go to stress analysis tab. So at this one, we are assigning what is the maximum number of iteration and tolerance. These are standard. We have tested these numbers in many verifications, so I will not touch these. I will let them be. Uh, for the number of load steps, in each stage that we are doing the simulation, uh, we will divide the load and uh, apply the load to the system in uh, fractions. Uh, the adaptive one is my favorite. If I'm using nonlinear material model, if I'm using 
if I'm going for complex analysis. The adaptive one is my choice here. For the convergence type, we have different convergence type here. Uh, the ones that are more accurate, more robust, more the, the result, the, the convergence is uh, we don't have any doubt in it. These are absolute force and energy and also the comprehensive one. Uh, absolute force and energy is going to check for the convergence of force out of uh, the out of balance force in the system and also the energy of the system. Energy would be the displacement multiplied by the force. And comprehensive is going to be absolute force and energy. On top of that, it is checking checking for the displacement as well. So it is checking all the components for the convergence. So absolute force and energy is my, my choice here. And uh, when we are solving the system of equation, we are using an iterative algorithm. And the iterative algorithm that we have uh, up to a couple of versions before a couple of years ago, we only had initial stiffness approach. We have uh, accelerated initial stiffness. And this is coming handy if the system of equation that we are solving is rather complex. Uh, this one is going to help the iteration iterative process to come to a solution faster and uh, in a more robust way. So that is my choice as well. Uh, as for the groundwater, it is already selected and grayed out transient finite element analysis as we selected at the very beginning when we, select, we were selecting the couple bio formulation. And uh, we have this tick mark here defined for water pressure by a stage so that based on that, we can define different conditions for the uh, drainage. So everything is set here for the project setting. If I say OK, we have all these stages developed for us. These are uh, the transient stages that we have the time for. The last one doesn't have time. As you can see, this is the steady state. And this is the initial state. Now, uh, as promised, I will use that nonlinear material model here. Let me right click here, material properties or assign material here. I'm going to use that north end material here from the beginning. And just to show you uh, what are the material properties that we are using. Uh, OK, this is north end. It is initial field of stress. Initial field uh, for the initial element loading, you have field of stress and body force. These are the stiffnesses that we define for it. And the strength size is north end. Uh, we have so many uh, different consumer models you can use. Yeah, we have different categories. And this one that I'm using is actually in the softening hardening uh, category, the last one, no uh, What I would like to mention for all these materials that are actually included in the model, uh, the initial condition, the initial element loading is field stress and body force. That is uh, because these are existent at the beginning of the uh, ex uh, simulation and they have their own weight. So uh, when we start to establishing the initial field of stress, you don't see much deformation happening in the domain. Embankment, however, embankment material will be introduced to the model later on. And uh, when it's being introduced to the model, uh, it will bring its own weight with itself. So it's going to have a uh, body force only effect and it's going to apply the, the weight of this embankment to the rest of the uh, geology, the layers that we have underneath the foundation. Okay, uh, now geometry is there. Material I assigned north and here. Now the material and the staging. In uh, this tab, I'm going to assign the staging that we are building the, cons uh, the embankment. I will go from assign material properties by picking from a list. I'll select the embankment material. And the embankment is being built at uh, the first 60 day, nothing happening. 61 day, we have the first layer coming in. Then uh, nothing happens until 63, 64, we have another layer coming in. 70 day, nothing happening. 71, we have another layer coming in. And finally, at 81 day, we have the final layer of embankment coming in. Okay. Now I'm done with this one. Let's review. I'm going to go to the very first. As I'm going through the stages, you can see the construction of the layers of embankment coming in. At uh, day 91, 
after all the construction, after all the layers are in, we have the load from the traffic coming in. So I'm going to go to loading tab here and I will select the uniform load here. Uh, traffic load was 10 kPa and but only coming from stage 11 and on so I will stage this 10 kPa the stage factors for this one they're going to be uh, 0 0 0 you can actually copy paste this from Excel as I did for the time or you can just change the values here so these are the load factors that we have for it it is coming at a stage one at 11 with the load factor of one and before that it's a zero okay okay and i'm going to put the load from this point to this point for one side of the road the other side i will get the load again the stage factors are already there i'll put it on the other side of the road as well okay so that's the external load from the traffic uh another thing is the field stress. You go to loading, field stress. You have a uh, field stress type gravity. We are using the actual ground surface. We are using the use effective stress ratio. And the K naught values is, are they are both in both in plane and on plane direction horizontally are 0.5. I'm okay with that. Uh, 0.5 is a good value. Let's go with that. Okay. If you have the actual values uh, measured from the field belt, you can use those values. Uh, so we have the loading also, if you go to stage 90, the load is not here, and after that the load is at the top. Next is the mesh. The mesh was originally here, I didn't change it. Uh, it's a rather uniform mesh, uh, 2000 elements, 2700 almost, it's okay. Uh, if I was going for more accurate results, probably I would go for refining the mesh around the area that I have the embankment, in this area that I'm hovering over and also covering to some extent the layer that is more important to me, so this north and material. So this area, I would refine it more. Uh, we don't have any support here for groundwater. Uh, initially, it is assumed that, let me go to the initial state. We have the water table standing at the uh, uh, minus 12 uh, elevation, that go to minus 12. So initially it stands around here, and at the very top surface, we have the seepage phase condition. So if in case a load or something happens here, if the water wants to flow coming to the surface, it has a uh, seepage phase, it can flow freely and go away. Now, when we are constructing the embankments at this stage, so the exposed surface is going to be top of the embankment. These boundaries here, uh, they should be removed, the seepage phase, unless we have some uh, geomembrane or some drainage system that we are actually leaving there uh, at the base of the embankment. In this one, we don't have that, so I'm just going to go grab my uh, boundary condition, groundwater boundary condition. I will delete these sections, so I can draw actually a window around them. And I will get the seepage phase condition. I will assign it to the new export top surface. Then I go through the stages again. This is okay. This one, we have a new layer coming in. So I have to delete this part. And I will add the CPA face to the new top surface. Then I go through the stages again. More stages. We have a new layer coming in. I will delete the very top again. And I will add the CPA face to the new exposed top surface. Okay, let's go to the next stage. The next one, okay, we have a new layer coming in. I will delete the very top that we had before. The new uh, exposed surface is this. This will be the new uh, seepage phase. Let me just go through the stages from the beginning just to make sure that we have everything set properly. That's first one, the first layer coming in, second layer coming in, third one, fourth, and we keep it there for the rest of the analysis. Okay, so we have the groundwater also defined here, all the uh, 
boundary conditions are in place. Last one is uh, close this one, the restraints, the solid restraints. What we are using here is the default for uh, surface restraints, considering lower rollers on the side. I'm okay with that. Or if you want, you can assign it again with that one. Uh, this simulation, I think, is good to go now. Let me save as with another name. Uh, I'm going to put it in desktop. Okay. Compute. Now, we have 17 stages. It is going through the stages one by one and solving the uh, system of equation for us. We had the maximum number of iteration 500. Iterations are going that these are the iterative process that is going to solve the system of equation for us and find the results. And as you see here, these are the tolerance, 1e minus 3. This is the solid tolerance. This is the fluid tolerance. And as you see, both of them are being solved and analyzed at the same time because we are solving for uh, that coupled formulation. We have to solve for both solid and fluid at the same time. This is that uh, coupled nature of the equations that we are solving. Uh, on this side, you have the execution proper, uh, priority. I only have uh, one application running, but if you have a couple of them, you can actually uh, assign this one. What is happening here at uh, this location, at this uh, bar here, the progress bar, in the stage 14 and the rest, we have a long time for the stage. Like for example, at stage 15 to 16, we have more than 100 days. So what's happening here, we are marching through the time. So that interval that we have for the time is divided into, in this case, three stages. And uh, those increments of time uh, are applied to solve this problem at that stage. And uh, one minute, 27 minutes, the simulation is done. It is just writing the results. Now we can look at the results after this. I'm going to interpret. Since we are looking at the consolidation analysis, let's go for uh, excess pore water pressure. Initially, there is no excess pore water pressure. Uh, 60 days, these are all zeros. There was no change in the domain. 61 is the one that we have actually the first layer coming in. Uh, so we have generation of excess pore water pressure in that uh, nonlinear material and also below the foundation, below the first layer. As you go further ahead in time, you have a little bit of time for dissipation and, and uh, adjustment for the pore water pressure. The second layer comes in, then you have some time. Third layer, then you have uh, some time to adjust the pressure. And uh, 91 days is the final stage for you have the load and construction, all of it uh, happening. And this is done, end of uh, the loading. After that, what you have only, you're allowing time for the excess pore water pressure to dissipate. Uh, if you see here, you have excess pore water pressure 120 now. If I go further ahead, these values are reducing and you can see that this pore water pressure is uh, dissipating and going away from the system. And at the very long term, so everything is zero, we don't have any excess pore water pressure. As I mentioned, this is our city state condition. Just to track the changes here, I'm going to add a query, add material query here. Uh, I select one point only in the middle of that uh, northern material layer. Let's plot graph data, uh, which is excess pore water pressure with logarithm of time. Select all. I'm going to remove the very first and last one. So this is the generation and dissipation of excess pore water pressure in the domain. Any load that we had, we have a jump in increase in the pore water pressure. Then you have some uh, adjustment. You have some time for the dissipation of it. And this is 91 days when we have that uh, final load from the traffic being applied to it. And then we have excess pore water pressure being dissipated because we are allowing time to it. Let's go back to the model. Uh, now, the other thing that is very important for us is the 
displacement. I'm looking at vertical displacement or settlement here. And uh, I will ignore whatever deformation that we had, uh, the minor deformation that we had in initial state. So to do that, I will go for a stage setting and I will use a reference state. And I will reference all the deformation uh, with respect to the very first initial state. Okay. Uh, so let's go here. These are all zeros. As uh, remember, uh, we didn't do anything within the 60 days, the first 60 days. Uh, I'm going to add one query line at the very uh, top surface. And I'm going to graph it, graph the vertical, vertical displacement versus logarithm of time, select all of them, and the last one I'll ignore it. And this is how your settlement is taking place. Uh, going back to the model again, at 365 days, one year, your deformation is uh, 12 centimeters and long term is close to 15 centimeters. So there's a still after even one year passed because you have this excess pore water pressure still uh, in the domain after one year and it's going to take a little bit more longer than this. For this to dissipate, we will have dissipation of this and equivalent to that you have more deformation, uh, more settlement at the top. Okay, uh, let's go back to the presentation. Uh, what I presented to you in the demo was uh, that uh, Norsen material. Now, uh, as you remember, I was talking Morkulo, modified cam clay, and Norsen. If you're comparing the modified cam clay to Morkulo, Morkulo uh, was uh, showing less deformation, less volumetric, uh, uh, if, uh, less volumetric strain in both three axial tests and also the odometer test. Uh, what you are looking at here is the excess pore water pressure at the end of construction and loading. So the more Coulomb is actually giving me excess pore water pressure of 39 maximum, and the Cancale is giving me 99. So the material that is showing you more compressibility is showing you more excess pore water pressure. If you are looking at the long-term settlement after everything has been uh, settled down, there is no excess pore water pressure in the domain. Once again, Cantley here is giving me 25 centimeter maximum deformation settlement, and the more Coulomb is giving me uh, 12 centimeter. An indication again that the Cantley one was better able to capture that densification, that uh, consolidation process, and uh, generation of uh, plastic volumetric strain or uh, plastic deformation happening in that layer vertically, you will have more settlement. Now, comparing the modified camp clay with the North Sand one, they were uh, pretty similar in terms of carrying load. So what you are seeing here in terms of generation of excess pore water pressure, they are almost same uh, within 91 days when everything is almost at the same uh, level of load and uh, uh, construction of the embankment. But if you remember, uh, the camp delay finally was showing more compression, more of volumetric strain. And this is the long-term settlement that I predicted, that we predicted uh, using modified camp clay and north sand. Modified camp clay is uh, close to 25 centimeter. North sand is predicting close to 19 centimeter, which was actually expected because the type of material model that we used, they were indicating that this will happen. Okay, uh, I will take the simulation one step higher, more complexity I'll add to it. We have uh, weak terrains, and uh, the, these weak terrain elements that we have in our finite element program, or on our study, we can use them to accelerate the consolidation process. These are equivalent to what we have in the fall, in the field that uh, in, they are used in the practice. We can also, uh, apply vacuum and simulate vacuum consolidation. Uh, the dialogue that you are seeing here is uh, when I'm going to assign victory patterns 
all along the lens of the embankment and going through the foundation. Okay, let's go to the model again. This was the final model that we made. I'm just gonna save a new name, consolidation. This is going to be vacuum consolidation. Vacuum consolidation. And everything is going to be the same for us, except if you remember for the first model, first 60 days, I didn't assign anything. In this one, what I would like to do, I'm going to apply that vacuum consolidation and I will apply it in a stage two, and which is for two months, period of 60 days. So to do that, I will go to groundwater tap from the menu. We are going to add weak train pattern. And uh, what I would like to have, my weak trains are going to be vertical going down to the foundation and they're going to be 20 meters long. So the direction would be orientation of these big terrain would be minus 90 degrees. I will only have them at stage number two and I will remove them at stage number three. So I will have that vacuum consolidation. The suction will be applied for two months. And after that, I will stop that and I start construction of the embankment. The big terrains themselves, uh, they are 10 centimeter diameter. We are applying pressure. We are doing vacuum consolidation. The pressure that we are applying is uh, 70 kPa, minus 70 kPa suction. Now, this uh, very important equivalent permeability that we have here, uh, this is going to limit the capacity that each drain can drain the water. Uh, each of these each drain can drain the water out of the domain. Uh, this could be limited by many factors. Uh, what I have is equivalent permeability. I will assign this permeability for these weak drains. Uh, the length of these weak drains, these are 20 meter deep. And uh, the in-plane spacing that we have for them is two meters here. And normal to the plane, uh, the assumption is that we are smearing the effect of whatever we have uh, normal to the plane. The spacing in plane, uh, the spacing out of plane, normal to the plane, is going to be smeared in the effect that we have for this uh, and account for it in this equivalent permeability. Uh, one thing that I would like to mention here, the model that we are creating here in 2D, the assumption is that this is plane strain. Uh, the dimension that we are, we are considering for the model, normal to the plane, we can assume this is infinite. So this is actually a long road that we are only simulating a section of that. Okay, I'll say okay to this. And, and I'm assigning uh, these big trains from the corner here all the way to cover the lens of the embankment in the foundation. As you see here, these entities, these are non-mesh conforming. So the mesh is not going to adjust itself to these, but these are a uh, special kind of elements that they will drain the water out uh, at the location that they are present. So this is set to go. These are only coming at a stage two, a stage three, these are gone. We can save it and compute. So uh, what I would like to comment while this model is being run, we have number of nodes in this uh, problem, uh, 5,300. So considering we have two degrees of freedom for deformation and one degree of freedom for pore water pressure for the domain, uh, uh, pore water pressure for all these nodes, we have close to 15,000 degrees of freedom. Uh, so these are the number of degrees of freedom that we have for this problem. So 15,000. Uh, the number, let me go back here. The number that you have here is also affected by the restraints that you have here. Also, uh, it is affected by the number of uh, the seepage phase condition element that you have there and also the big terrain conditions as well. So these values, essentially in the same range as three times multiplied by the number of nodes, but we have other components coming in. Uh, the point that I would like to make here is that this is coupled analysis. 
we have two degrees of freedom for solid, one degree of freedom for pore water pressure, and all of them are being solved at the same time. This process again, this is marching through time and it's solving it both at the same time for solid and fluid. What I would like to mention here is that the engine, the finite element engine that we have here is fully parallel. Multiprocessors are contributing to the solution and one minute, 30 minutes, this is done. We can take a look at the results. Okay, I'm just gonna close these graphs that we had from the previous one. Let's look at the one with the vacuum consolidation. And let's take a look at seepage analysis. Let's look at excess pore water pressure, 60 days. Previously, what we had for that 60 days, excess pore water pressure, these are all zero. And what I have here is actually we are applying lots of suction here and the water has been drained out. And as you can see here, I mean, the water surface from the top in this highly, uh, more high, uh, with the higher permeability is actually dropping down as well. And uh, the other components, let's look at vertical displacement. The vertical displacement we have at the very top, for example, this is the point that we analyzed before, we have close to six centimeters settlement happening in the phase that we are applying that uh, vacuum consolidation. And uh, this is the area that we have that settlement happening before uh, even constructing that embankment. So before, if I go for that uh, deformation, this one was almost zero. What we have here for this one uh, is close to six centimeters. If you go to the final stages, uh, let me actually tie the view so that we can look at both of them together. The final stages we are looking at, let me lock the view as well. The final deformation that you see at the surface, it's in the same order of 18 centimeters in both of them. But the process that we got there, if you look at, for example, uh, 91 day at the end of the construction and loading, the one that you had the big drain, the maximum deformation that you have here is 14 centimeters. This other one is close to eight. So in the one that we had the big terrain and vacuum consolidation, we have accelerated the process of consolidation. Uh, just to show you in a graph, let's go to the presentation. Uh, the vacuum consolidation is uh, the vertical displacement with time is shown here for both cases. So that vacuum consolidation for two months resulted in uh, 35% of the long term settlement that we have. So close to six centimeter, five centimeter, we had it at the beginning. And the final settlement for both of them is close to uh, that uh, 15, 16 centimeter at the end of the consolidation when we have all the pore water pressure dissipated. Now, the way that uh, these vacuum consolidation, these big terrain are contributing to the acceleration of consolidation process, it depends to many factors, the specification of the big terrain, the pattern, the duration that we are applying, the suction and the pressure, and uh, many things. But all of that, it can be considered in the simulation that we are actually running. Okay, so that was for the 2D. Uh, this one is the 2D example. I will just uh, show you the example here. I'm not running this one. Uh, it is in essence, similar to what we had in the other case, the layers of the materials are almost the same. We are looking at consolidation again. Uh, the timing I have assigned to be the same. The number of layers are the same. The only thing is that uh, this one is a 3D simulation. Uh, I'm not just talking about the geology. Uh, this is only an embankment limited in 3D area. The other one, the assumption was that normal to the plane of the model, it was infinite. So it was a very long model. This one is only uh, limited to this area that is covered on this embankment. The other one in Y direction, for example, this direction was infinite. Uh, I will show you the model here. I have it open in uh, RS3, this one. So uh, similar to RS2, generating the model, geometry is very easy. We have so many tools, 3D uh, 
geometry can be built in so many ways here. What we have here, we have used uh, the borehole editor, the borehole options that we have to generate the geology. And on top of that, we are building the embankment. If I increase the transparency and go through the stages, you can see that, okay, these are the same time values as I had before. Let me actually show all intersected geometries. So the embankment are coming at 61 days and continuing different layers are coming in at uh, 91 day. For example, if I go to the loading tab, you can see that I have the load coming in and the rest of it is almost the same as what we had before. The material that I'm using here for this layer is also, uh, let me select this one, is the same as North End material that we had before. Now, uh, I'm just showing you the results here. Let's look at the results. We are looking at, uh, let's say, excess pore water pressure. Let's look at the values at uh, 11, stage 1191 day at the end of the construction and also application of the track, the load, this is not traffic load, the load that we have on top here. Uh, given that most of the components that we have in this model is similar to what we had in the 2D one, you can see that the excess pore water pressure at the end of construction and loading, let me reduce the transparency a little bit, uh, in the 2D case is 55, in the 2D was close to 110. Let me add uh, another control plane in uh, X, Y, Z direction and move it a little bit. Let's highlight this one, reduce the transparency a little bit so that we can see the bubble that is forming for that excess pore water pressure in that layer. Now, so the excess pore water pressure is lower because the nature of the load that I mentioned, this is a 3D case, the other one was 2D, uh, the embankment was assumed in that case that is infinite in the Y direction. Now, if you look at the deformation, let's go Z displacement for settlement, and I'm gonna go to the very last stage, which is uh, our steady state, all the excess pore water pressure has been dissipated and gone. Uh, the maximum deformation that I'm getting here is close to nine centimeters. So what we had before was like close to 15, 16 centimeters. In 3D case, we are getting uh, nine centimeters. That's just uh, in equivalent uh, kind of uh, geology. Materials are the same. The loading scenario was the same. That's the effect of uh, considering the 3D geometry for this embankment compared to that one that was uh, 2D and assum the assumption was that it's infinite in the direction of normal to the plane. Okay, uh, thank you very much everybody for joining us today. Uh, I have just an announcement here. Uh, we will have part two of Finite Element webinar series on September 23rd. Uh, the topic and the rest of it will be announced later. And uh, I will go through the questions. Uh, some of them has been answered probably by my colleagues from the other side. Uh, if my colleagues can let me know which one to answer, that would be great. Or I'm gonna go through the examples, I to, to the question myself and see which one is not answered and I pick a couple of them to answer. Mm -hmm. I can see most of them are answered. They were asking for posting the webinar online. We have a YouTube channel. Most of these webinars, they're going to be online later on. And uh, YouTube videos are available. Okay, what is the major advantage of RS2 over Settle 3D for the embankment settlement analysis? Uh, Settle 3D, uh, uh, okay, Settle 3D, when we are dealing with uh, 
state of stress, we are looking at 3D uh, state of stress. And when we are applying the load, okay, we are considering the 3D state of stress and the load is going to affect the, uh, the whole domain below the load. But the assumption is that the materials underneath the load are elastic. And after that, okay, let's say uh, that assumption for consideration of the distribution of stress is okay with elastic, we are okay with that. Uh, the consolidation process is one dimensional. So uh, we are considering that one dimensional Terzaghi equation for consolidation. The uh, drainage is only happening from the uh, vertical direction. So it's a 1D consolidation. Uh, it's in many cases that could be applied. Settle 3D is a good, very good program, very easy to use, and uh, in many cases can be applied. But if your geometry is actually uh, not that extensive and your drainage path is not only vertical so that the water can escape in uh, different directions in 3D space, in that case, uh, you'll have to go for uh, another program. If you're the size of the load is rather extensive, like you're simulating an airport, that's good. If you're looking at the mat foundation, that's very good. Our Settle 3D can handle those problems very nicely. You have very good results for it. But if the area that is under the load is rather limited, yeah, then uh, you have to consider different programs. And also uh, mentioning again, the material properties, the material behavior that you are simulating could be more advanced in our finite element tools. Uh, if you were concerned, I have a question here. Uh, if you were concerned with the stability throughout the embankment lifespan, how would you go about assessing this? Okay, uh, on top of what we have for the consolidation analysis, uh, let me bring up RS2. Okay, uh, you can actually look at strength reduction. So, uh, in cases that we are not using those advanced material models, like this uh, North Sand or Camp Clay, we have the SSR, you can apply it to it, and you can actually find the factor of safety at any stage that you would like. Uh, we don't have SSR for these advanced material models because when you apply that shear strength reduction, the whole constitutive model will be uh, changed. So, we, ha we don't have that applied. But if you are looking for factor of safety, for uh, all those elastic uh, classic material models, those are, you can have SSR for them. And if you're concerned with stability, in many cases, if the simulation is not converging and uh, you're looking at the large deformation happening in the domain, you have shear bands uh, uh, or a concentration of shear strain in some locations, you can uh, identify that as failure. Uh, we have a, what is the zone of influence? Okay, when what is the zone of influence? Okay, if looking at in RS2, when you're applying the load, you can see that, okay, because we are solving for the physical problem that you have here, it's actually handled properly. You don't need to go for uh, more details than that. This is uh, the actual physical problem is being simulated. Uh, can I use Settle 3D to calculate the dissipation of pore water pressure and settlement as described in this webinar? Yes, Settle 3D can do the consolidation process completely. The only thing is that consolidation uh, formulation in Settle 3D is based on uh, one-dimensional consolidation and the uh, stress uh, distribution in the domain, the assumption is uh, rather uh, when you are evaluating those, those are uh, Elastic. I'm going through the list of the questions. Uh, can we get the graphs of different models of stress strain curve? Yes. Uh, the one that I showed you in the presentation, actually, let me go back uh, to the presentation shortly. This one, a uh, couple of months, we will have this program for you. Uh, you can test and evaluate any of the constitutive models that we have in RS2 and RS3. You can do uh, lots of cool things, calibration, uh, evaluation, visualization, animation, and all of that. You can test your material model. You can uh, 
analyze them, you can calibrate them, you can save the models, you can save the material models, then you can import to other tools and use them. Thank you very much, guys. Uh, most of the questions that I see in the list, these are answered. If uh, anything left, uh, please email us. We will address all the questions. And looking forward to the next presentation in September.